Hello and welcome to The Dinosaur for week 48, another seven curious, interesting things I saw last week. So as ever, let's crack on. First one is the Voxon Photonics VX2 XL, and as the name describes, this is actually the XL version of its current holographic display. Uh, and yes, you can see 2D things on your normal screen, but this you can then explore them in three dimensions. Uh, it displays 16 million color voxels, and that's a volumetric pixel. So imagine like a one Lego block, all of those in a 3D space. Space. Uh, what's really happening is there's a spinny thing. So you can see that slightly fluttering in the video. What it is inside there, there's essentially a matrix or like a fan of uh, pixels or LEDs that light up as they whiz around. If you put your finger in there, it would be pretty bad for your fingers. Uh, but there you go. If you want one of these, I think it's about £6,000 for the normal one, or $6,000, sorry, for the normal one. This is probably going to be a bit more, but that's kind of cool. Like that. Um, OpenAI have had their Sora text-to-video generation model leaked. Um, so uh, the Sora model was announced a couple of months ago and OpenAI said it was too powerful to release to mere mortals. So they gave some artists early access to it and they've been getting some feedback from that. Um, apparently those artists are pretty disgruntled. They feel like they're actually just being exploited by a large company. Lots of the uh, stuff has been stolen and therefore that their labor in this is being devalued. So therefore they leaked it onto um, say AI community space which is called a hugging uh, face um, uh, yeah if you want to go and see the the kind of the the takedown and the notice and all that sort of stuff it's on there there's a whole video the YouTube video by the way which is what this is is what people were starting to generate with it now given access to it so these are all new videos that we haven't seen before so yeah, so this is probably one of the first or the, the ongoing salvo in the war with it, with artists versus big AI companies. We know this is rumbling on, but it's really interesting this has been leaked. Uh, I mean, realistically, it's pretty similar to the other ones. I think people are being a little bit generous when they're saying it's groundbreaking, but um, lots of things going through things, lots of cats emerging out of other cats, lots of limbs missing. So it's not brilliant, um, but yeah, still good. But this is really about artists being pissed off and leaking it. So there you go. You go. Uh, this is YouTuber Backward. Couldn't actually find his real name. I did search, but uh, what he's done is he's taken the uh, the childhood cup and string thing, the science experiment where you speak into a cup and it goes down the string, and you can hear it in the other one. He's used that to upload a YouTube video, and it's a quite a long YouTube video as well. So that YouTube video, every second using this technique, and he did the whole video is about how he did it. It took him three years to figure it out and get the error correction, all that sort of stuff. Essentially, you turn the video into sound, send it along the string and you recover the sound and you turn that back into data. And yes, if you're a bit old, that is actually how modems used to work and kind of still do, but using audio. Um, so uh, apparently every second took five hours to upload and it took over five months to upload the actual video that you watch. So it's um, not to everybody's taste, the presentation style, I must admit, but I did enjoy it. It's okay. Good. Um, go and have a look at the video down below. It's awesome. Uh, this is in slightly in the same uh, vein. This is uh, Sean Hodgkins, and uh, this is his second attempt at this kind of face mapping on a mask thing, but now using LED. So uh, it uses nearly 3,000 LEDs all mapped into the, the mask. Uh, it uses a Raspberry Pi to control it, some custom printed circuit boards, which are pretty awesome as well, all 3D soldered into this shape as well. Um, and he shows you how he does it, how you map the pixels, which is great, um, at least for a nerd like me, it is. Um, but you can imagine this stealing somebody's face. It's a very crude version at the moment, obviously, but imagine this as kind of e-ink, non-reflective or non-emissive light. You could actually have a high definition face mask on and walk around and not trigger any of the cameras tracking you and that sort of thing. Um, probably couldn't get into your face or your face ID at the moment into your phone, but kind of interesting, I like where that's going. Also good for the rave scene. If you're into the rave scene, uh, I want to see one of those. Australia has passed a social media ban for under 16s. So this won't come into effect until 2025, or at least late 2025. Uh, if you are, uh, for instance, one of the big companies and you flaunt this ban, then you will be um, probably fined up to about 50 million Australian dollars. Uh, and apparently lots of Australians are behind this as well. There are some obviously groups uh, that are against this, um, but 77% of Australians apparently back this ban. Now, nobody's really sure how this is going to work. How will you you actually guarantee that somebody is under 16 because you obviously don't want to ask them for ID. Um, so there's lots of uh, people ex thinking how this might work, which is, you know, do they take um, video snaps? Do they look at their past history to see how old they are? That sort of thing. But there you go. So that'll be TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, X, etc. 
Uh, YouTube is not in this ban, so uh, that will be still okay. So lots of people saying, you know, you're restricting access to vulnerable people to valuable resources, but a lot of old people saying, as we've seen, social media is very bad for mental health and also development of uh, youth. So there you go. See how that one goes. Um, it's the first in the world. We'll see how that one goes. Uh, this is sub-pixel art, takes a head a little while to get around this, but if you're uh, watching through a, through a display, which you will be, it uses red, green, and blue pixels, and each one of those lights up to make a pixel of color. Um, now, if you split those down, you can actually use the red, green, and blue dots as their own pixels. So you can actually make three times more definition in your monitor width-wise than you currently have. And you can do these kind of cool things, like you can hide secret messages in blobs of color as well. So um, I just really like the idea of this. It actually gives your monitor three times the definition horizontally, but obviously the same vertically because the pixels are kind of slices. But there you go, kind of interesting. So uh, well done to Raffi Riddle for that, or Jaffy Riddle, very good name as well. Really like that. Definitely worth a watch because it does explain it kind of well as well. And finally, uh, this is uh, Duncan McGabe. Duncan McCabe has done this amazing um, Strava run. Now, when I run on Strava, I try to do little pictures as well. I do sort of slugs and I do snails and the occasional thing. Um, but Duncan has taken it uh, another step, if you excuse the pun, another step forward. So he's done these animations, apparently he used PowerPoint, uh, took a map and then plotted each one of the frames on PowerPoint and then ran. Uh, it took him 120 runs over 10 months to create the 20 second video you see on the left hand side. And it's got, it's got billions of views as well. So uh, well done for Duncan. Duncan McCabe, uh, follow him on Strava. And uh, yeah, maybe there'll be some more. Like that, well done. Uh, as I say here, remember data can be fun too. Uh, nice. If that was interesting, great. Uh, follow if you haven't already. Send it to somebody awesome. Share, like, subscribe, all those good things. And I'll see you next week.